The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstead. I'm filling in for Tommy O'Brien today. And uh, today we have a lower outlook for the stock market. We had a, a lower day yesterday. Right now, everything with the futures is pointing towards a lower opening with the Dow, the S&Ps, and the NASDAQ, both uh, all three pointing lower. Uh, yesterday, we had Treasury yields that had definitely pushed into some higher territory, as well as we have the energy sector, which is also causing a little bit of uh, a spark in people's eyes right now wondering how high can oil go so these are things that we're going to look at as we get through the show today uh, so those are the major things to look at there are some earnings that come out just before the opening as well as some after the opening nothing really too big so um but uh these are things that we are starting out our day with and uh now i'm going to take a look at the dollar index also we had a nice breakout there which is because of the way yields are moving and also because of the way the energy sector is moving so we have very interesting things going in the markets to start this uh, holiday week off uh, yesterday into today. But whenever you have a shortened week, it's kind of odd how you have to compress five days of trading into four. And we are definitely uh, doing that this week for sure with what's going on with the volatility. So we have an interesting show, some topics for you. <clears throat> so we have the dollar index up. Like I said, we can see how that broke out. I'm going to pull up the euro U.S. dollar to see what, what's going on with there right now. And that market right now is pretty stable. So the dollar right now is uh, stabilizing after yesterday's uh, strength, mostly due to the uh, the euro and the pound, and also because of the yield-driven uh, action that we have seen. So um, we have some stocks uh, that we uh, can uh, talk about today. We have Kevin Hinks coming up, hopefully, I believe, in uh, about 10 minutes or so. And hopefully he has some nice uh, little tips for you uh, coming up as far as what to look for today. So uh, there's some stocks that uh, I actually have been uh, watching. And I'm going to pull up my little watch list real quick on my computer to show you um, what I've got. Let's see. We have. Let's see. There we go. Okay. All right, so one of the ones that I've been looking at is NVIDIA. That's something that I would take a look at as far as in the, uh, the tech sector. And there's also uh, something I also think you should take a look at right now because of the oil sector uh, with the uh, rally in oil is transportation stocks. So for any of you tigers and tigresses out there that are in some of the real companies out there, not just the tech space and the, uh, the virtual space that's out there, obviously those are the highest flyers and most talked about names. Uh, but transportation stocks is something I would definitely start to lean on and keep your eye on as oil prices start to spike higher, especially as we um, breach this uh, upper 80 area into the 90 area, like 90, 95, if we get up into that area over the next week or so. I think you really need to start to take a look at the transportation stocks. Remember, we had uh, just uh, a few months ago, one of the largest trucking companies go uh, belly up, bankrupt, um, one of the oldest companies also in the country. And that was uh, something that I think people are taking rather lightly. And I don't think they're really taking into account what's really going on in that sector. And as the transportation costs go up, I think, and also the f cost of financing is going up. That's being going to start to really squeeze those stocks. I think that your profit margins, especially in those core, <clears throat> in all those corporations, is something that you're going to really have to keep your eye on as we move forward over the next few quarters. Are you going to see it over the next couple months? Probably not. There's always a lag when it comes to these types of things, uh, but I would definitely start to watch the transportation sector as we move forward through the uh, the rest of the third quarter and definitely into the fourth quarter. If you start to see uh, some issues in that sector, especially a drag, then I would really, really start to pay attention to that because that's going to have an impact on the overall S&P index. So that's something that you really need to uh, pay aware, pay attention to. As it, and if that is correct, if the transportation 
expectations start to take a dive going into, say, like fourth quarter and into the first quarter of next year, that's also going to start to really hit your uh, your mid cap stocks as well. And if that starts once you start to see the, the transportation sector and also if it starts to hit the mid, mid caps, especially in the Russell and, and uh, indexes like that. Overall, you're going to probably see it influence a lot of your uh, um, index funds. And for many of you uh, investors out there that you are either um, trading stocks or investing in stocks, I'm sure many of you have a portfolio that has um, mutual funds and also index funds. If you have index funds in your portfolios, I think you really need to pay attention to what's going on in those sectors as we move forward into the next few quarters. So. Um, that's one thing I wanted to leave you with a note on. I figure right off the bat, since this is an equity program, to have some information for you there. Uh, we have some uh, other interesting topics that I'm going to bring to light. Uh, I think that uh, the sector, um, transportation, I know it's something that's kind of boring and you don't really talk about too much, but hopefully it's something you, you, you take a little bit of uh, an eye to. Uh, as far as other things you need to take a look, I think you need to watch the Dow as well. Uh, the Dow, I know obviously over yesterday and today you have a little bit of a, a little negative tone. Um, overall, I think that over the next uh, week, two to three weeks, though, I think that you really have to be kind of mindful of the, uh, the, the strength that's going on in the overall indexes. We're heading into the earnings season right now. And as we head into earnings season, that's also going to probably give a lift to uh, many of the stocks in the Dow and as well as in the S&Ps. <clears throat> so I think you're going to have to keep a buy break forecast, even though yields right now are pushing their highs. Odds are is that yields are not going to get that much higher. Remember that yields are now pushing an area where they were just 12 or 10 months ago. We've had a lot of interest rate hikes since then. So fair value as far as where yield should be on a pricing basis in the cash and in the futures is right now. And it's still at a discount compared to where it was just 10 months ago. And that's something you need to be mindful of, that even if we have the Fed raise for another one to two, maybe even three meetings, let's say we have three quarters of a point over the next you know, six months uh, by the Fed which is possible since other central banks are definitely looking towards the hawkish end of, of the uh, spectrum. And if that is the case, it's probably not going to twist the Fed's arm, but most likely keep them in a still a hawkish manner. OK, so that's something I would be also very mindful as you move forward, especially if you're playing the long side in equity markets, because this is still going to be a topic. I know a lot of people think that the raise, the raising is over, the Fed is done, they've done too much or what have you too quickly. May, there's all kinds of opinions on that side of the fence. But right now, still, there is no real reason to think that you're going to see a halt in the uh, um in the and the hiking and the hawkishness by the Fed, especially with unemployment still. Until unemployment really starts to increase, you know, that's something that is uh, I think you need to see happen. If we see unemployment get over four and a half to get to pushing five percent, that's their target. What they're looking for, we're nowhere near that right now. So that's something we still need to see. But the one thing we do have. Um, that's going on is the other economic numbers. I've watched PPI and CPI as well. Uh, those numbers over the next three to four months, I think, are going to become very crucial as far as what the Fed will be doing. And this is important for all you uh, stock uh, equity investors because obviously most equity investors have pretty much, I think, have it in their consensus that the Fed is it may not going, it may not become dovish. But as far as being hawkish, they're most if likely going to pause. If you're trading in setups mindset. in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, everybody. This is Teddy Kexteff filling in for Tommy O'Brien, and I believe we should have Kevin Hanks on the air with us now as well. Are you there, Kevin? Good morning, Teddy. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Great to uh, have a chance to talk with you today. So, Kevin, tell me, uh, what are your uh, thoughts about today's trading? We have a shortened week. It's always kind of compressed, and you have to deal with some crazy stuff in a four-day work week. Uh, what are you looking at today? What, what, do, you, what do you like? Yeah, I think what's dominating some of the early morning uh, headlines is crude oil prices. And what we've been talking about uh, over here that we knew crude oil prices were going to start showing up in some data and in some companies. And sure enough, three airlines come out with uh, announcements, you know, United Airlines, Alaska Air, and Southwest all coming in with the fact that crude oil, their, their energy prices for JetBlue have jumped 20% since July. So you've got the airlines all lower to start the day. You've got, you know, the four indices lower to start the day. So it's making a little bit of a snapback after a real weekday yesterday. So, you know, uh, Charles Schwab has put out some data. September is a very one of the more bearish months historically of the year. Uh, hedge funds are increasing their short positions in the overall market. Uh, some I, I, we expect uh, Canada's uh, the Bank of Canada to keep rates. That's coming out at ten o'clock Eastern. They, they'll keep rates unchanged. So things like that. It's very thin week for economic data. It's a very thin week for earnings. But the market will continue to move and headlines will still dominate. I think crude oil is slowly but surely take over some of the discussions in the markets because, let's face it, energy prices have to show up somewhere, either in inflation or in earnings. You know, it's good for the energy sector, but pretty much bad for every other sector of the economy that, that uses energy. 
Well, you know what, Kevin? It's funny because just before you came on the show, I was talking about to the uh, Tigers and Tigresses that they should watch the transports over the next three to four months. Now, I'm an S&P guy. Transports are definitely one of the part sectors that you watch in the S&Ps. And with the spike in oil and the way that's trending, I agree with you 100 percent that these are things that people need to be very mindful of because that could definitely put a big drag on the S&Ps and, and also the, even the Russell and stuff as we move into the fourth quarter and towards the end of the year. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think you have to watch the different parts. You know, we're through second quarter earnings season, the majority, right? We've got a couple big names to come up here to go, but we're through the majority, the lion's share of earnings season. So, you know, this is the market all year that has basically defied what all the, the prognosticators said, right? People thought it would be a bumpy first half of the year and then clear sailing. For the second half of the year. Well, that didn't turn out very well. The first half of the year, we went gangbusters to the upside. So now what? Right? I think Joel right. Powell is close to being done with interest rates. I don't think he wants to go higher, but I think he'll wait for the data to tell him. We get CPI on the 13th, a Fed meeting on the 19th and 20th, where they'll, most people say it's a pretty much unanimous that they're going to pause and wait for more data. But you know, what is on the horizon for this market? It, it's hard to say because I've been doing this a while and some things are on the calendar that could surprise you, some things aren't. I agree with you 100%, especially with the data that they're looking at. You know, like, it's, I mean, it, you look at especially with the spike in oil and many of the, I think that. Honestly, as we move forward over the next four to six to 12 months, that the CPI and indexes like or numbers like that are become very valuable as far as where we're moving with as far as the Fed and what they're going to do. You know, they do have a mission that they laid down that they're still trying to act on, you know. And if we have inflationary data that starts spiking again as we move forward into the rest of the year, it's going to be really hard for them to just be on a pause, you know, and especially with other central right. banks, like you mentioned, the Bank of Canada probably is not going to pull the trigger. Um, but you have things, especially in Germany and the EU, their economy is collapsing and their currency also, you know, I mean, I know in the short run, it's making new lows against the dollar. And that doesn't mean very much because the trend is pretty extreme. Um, but if, if they don't pull the trigger, you know, it's going to just exacerbate what's going on with them. And I think that it's very unlikely that the BOE, you know, and also the uh, ECB are not going to do some sort of hawkishness, you know, in the future, especially in the next, like, at least two to three months, you know. And I think that's going to push the Fed's arm, too, because they're going to want to keep that balance. What do you think about that? Do you think that's going to strong arm them a little bit or no? Yeah, I think there's a problem that we're closer to being done. I don't, you, know, you, you can make a case for being done. You can make a case for one more maybe in November. But we're closer to being done. Europe, they're not close to being done. Christine Lagarde has been very clear. Their fight in, against inflation continues. We're not over fighting inflation, but we're closer to being done. Jerome Powell's got rates where he thinks they're re restrictive enough. One of his comments at the March meeting was, and they got rates restrictive, but they haven't been here very long. So I think Jerome Powell thinks he's gone far enough with rates. I don't think Christine Lagarde did. They're, they, they were later than us fighting inflation, and they haven't fought as hard as we have fighting inflation. So, yeah, that could be a big disruptor. Then you've got China, which is such a part of our, uh, our economy. They're tied, whether we want them to be or not. And China is throwing everything at the wall trying to stimulate their economy. And frankly, the numbers continue to come in weak. So China is an issue. Europe is going to be an issue. Uh, so yeah, all these things are going to add up and affect the market. So I think there's even close. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you, and especially the China numbers, too. And, you know, I think that what you're seeing with China, too, is reflectionary. Of like, remember when we had the, the Great Recession of 2008, you know, China was one, like less than a year away from having some really harsh economic woes. I mean, when we slowed down and the rest of the world slowed down, and I think it's starting to show in China that, you know, if we're not doing well in the United States and if the EU is not doing well, China's not doing well. <laughs> they don't do right. well unless we're doing well. When we slow down, they slow down, right? You know, it's kind of a, a direct reflection. At least that's my point of view on that one. Right.
we'd love to say that we're by ourselves and we're the leader. And you can make a case we are the leader, but they're all connected, whether we want them to be or not. Right, right. Absolutely. I agree with you 100 percent. So um, but uh, yeah, definitely. It's very great talking to you today. Is there one last note on anything you want to talk about? People should look out for any uh, special stocks to watch, any potential volatility, big movers that you're thinking? Names we're going to co- cover today on today's well, stop that has earnings coming out after the bell today. It's, it's not a great name, but it's a name that certainly trades a lot, and we'll cover both of those today. Great, great. Sounds very good. Sounds very good. Thank you very much, Kevin. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me on. Have a great day. All right, everybody, that was Kevin Hanks. Definitely appreciate the knowledge that he brought to the table there. Very uh, enlightening as far as uh, his take on what's going on with the economy and uh, how this is going to move the uh, the equity markets, especially today as we uh, move through this uh, shortened week. So um, I guess we still keep on going. We don't have the time sequence here um, for the chart when the commercial. There it is. Okay. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. A 
Hello, everybody. This is Teddy Kexta filling in for uh, Tommy O'Brien today. We've had an interesting first half hour, a great uh, interview with Kevin Hanks in the last segment. And uh, typically, Tommy brings me in, uh, in a few, would normally be in a few minutes uh, for the Forex little interview on Wednesdays. So I'm going to get into that, do a little Forex freestyle uh, Wednesday action for you as we get through the halfway part of the show with the stock market just open. So we'll digest its opening and then we'll get to that in a little bit. All right. So U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. Kevin Hanks brought up the fact that we have the Bank of Canada um, that may or may not be acting today. Uh, we'll see what happens with them and the expectations. Uh, as he said, is that they will be not doing absolutely nothing. So I would expect, as you can see, the U.S. dollar Canada is kind of in a neutral trade. Dollar right now is uh, a little mixed. It's a little stronger. It's a little weaker. Uh, we'll get into that as we cover the other currency crosses. Uh, so, but uh, right now, you see the uh, the Canada did make a higher move high today. Um, it came into our hit our up upside target level yesterday and right now we'll bar we're bobbling right here around this level around 136.51 area. I think that as yields, especially today, they're pulling back a little bit, uh, slightly lower as they're lower and as certain as some of the other major currencies start to have a little bit of a profit taking bounce against the dollar and I would believe that the Canada is probably going to be one of them also. Uh, it's been obviously in an aggressive bear, uh, bull trend, still making higher move highs and higher move lows with newer higher move highs over the last two days. Yeah, but right now I think you're getting into a very toppy area. Um, is is the trend over? I'm not even remotely going to go there on that one. But I think in the short run um, we are hitting a buffer of resistance where um, things are probably going to get very spiky. As if it does make a higher move high, I'd be very cautious buying into these highs right now, and um, I would also be very cautious selling into them right now. I would wait for a signal. If we do see a big pullback in yields. Then I think you could see a nice turn, uh, turn towards support for at least a profit-taking break. We had a nice key swing low that was made last week, and now once again we've made a higher move high. The trend is in place. We could be setting up for some big sideways, especially after the meeting today. Not a lot of expectations until after that meeting is over for this currency cross. Now we have some other ones that are some moving and shaking. So we have the U.S. dollar CHF. The Swissy, look at that. We had a nice breakout that happened yesterday, and now we have some follow through. Now, this is a mover. Uh, the, the dollar index was very strong yesterday, in part mostly because of the euro slamming new lows and because of the British pound. Um, those have the bigger weights in the, in the dollar index. However, the Swiss has been. Although it's been in an uptrend, has been in a grind. I mean, you can see by the chart. Like, I'll tell you what: if you were a, even a bull, I would be hard pressed to see how well you did being long, unless you just sat on a position and fell asleep over the past like month and a half. If you tried to short it, you had opportunities, that's for sure, but not very long and not much opportunity at that. You know, we've been making higher move highs and higher move lows, but on a very sideways basis until we broke out this week. Interestingly enough, on a short week, Monday it was close, we were wedging, and then boom, Tuesday and now Wednesday, we're heading up towards this upside correction zone. Um, this area, I think, will buffer. The strength overall, the U.S. dollar Swiss, even if even if the dollar was to remain strong over the next three, four, six months, as a whole, this market is in a sell rally forecast. The Swiss is much stronger than the dollar. This current rally that's been going on for the past month and a half should be viewed as a correction, at least right now, on a long-term and short-term basis. It has every indication of only being that. So I think that when we do get into this area here of this upside correction zone, that we're going to start to run into um, a brick wall. I mean, you can see how how hard it was. I mean, in August, we had gotten up towards this 88 even area. But for us to get across 88.75, to get three quarters of a buck higher, it took us all, all month to touch it fall back and then finally breach that area that that's that resistance is starting to really weigh on this market and that's because the overall trend is that way so i would definitely be careful for <clears throat> any bullish sentiment out there look for rallies to sell into now um, I, I would be very careful buying into this move and once you have a valid sell signal i think you're going to have a good chance of getting a nice corrective move because at least that is a trend trade it would not be a counter trend trade because the overall trend once again is a bear.
All right, British pound, U.S. dollar. Let's take a look at this one. We made new lows yesterday, and once again, we made new lows again today. Uh, the 125.94 directional pivot level that you can see. Sustained trading below there keeps this market really bearish. Um, obviously, this is boosting the dollar strength right now um, without yields necessarily driving the trade like they did yesterday um, and the day prior, uh, or excuse me, <clears throat> um, last week. So, uh, but right now, with all the economic woes there, unless the Bank of England, England starts to uh, would, would take some aggressive hawkish action, I, I think this trend is pretty much locked in place. You, you're right now. It's short term, obviously. It is a bear intermediate. It's kind of a sideways trade. Um, longer term, you could say it was. It's somewhat positive, but not really anymore. Let once again, unless the Bank of England starts to get aggressively hawkish. Do I think they're going to um, uh, do something over the next three to four months? Absolutely, I do. Do I think they're going to be aggressive? No, I don't. Um, I, I think they're pretty much out of bullets and they don't have the ability to uh, put that kind of a stranglehold on their economy. I, 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 they were behind the curve starting out, <clears throat> as Kevin Hanks had pointed out earlier um, on the show, um, which I totally agree with. And now they're in a situation where uh, they're just throwing gasoline on the fire. And I if that is the case, there's going to be most likely a reluctancy to uh, raise rates or be very hawkish, which would help support their currency. So do I think that uh, the, the British pound is going to get real severely beaten down? No, absolutely not. Uh, but I do believe that a bear trend is now in place. And I would be very cautious, especially like, should we get a bounce? Should we get back above this directional pivot level at 125.94? Absolutely, can we get back to this 128.75 to pushing 129 above that area, a dollar 29, excuse me? Uh, yes, I think that's very, very likely that we could see a spike there, especially if we were to have. Uh, an indication of a longer term pause by the U.S. Fed um, over the next couple of meetings. If that consensus starts to really grow in that factor um, in the, or in that outlook, then I think, yes, you could see the uh, the pound U.S. dollar trade back up towards this area do, just because of those fundamental reasons. Um, this, I think, would be the extreme, though, I, even uh, unless we were to have some really long term outlook where, for instance, we not only were we on a, we a pause, but there was some thought that the U.S. Fed would cut rates, say, the, at the beginning of next year, which I don't think we're in that situation because the Fed is not hitting its all of its targets that it needs to or, or wants to for what it, what it was why it was raising rates to so aggressively in the way they have over the last year so unless they change that I don't see that we're going to see anything like that so now it's time for a break I think or maybe not <laughs> so maybe I'm off by a minute there. So um, so anyhow, that's the British pound U.S. dollar. And I'm going to go on now to the U.S. dollar JPY. So um, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, my watch is a, is a minute off. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, 
or SPXS, Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, everyone. This is Teddy Kexta filling in for Tommy O'Brien. Uh, we had left uh, covering a couple of currencies. I'm going to cover a couple more before I jump into some equities again. So uh, we would spoken about oil earlier in the show. Uh, Kevin Hanks had mentioned it also about the new uh, higher move highs that we have, the breakout to the upside. And as far as uh, everyone's looking at it like, hey, the bull is back. Uh, well, one of the currencies that are influenced by oil is the U.S. dollar yen trade. Interestingly enough, uh, oil is slightly lower. Lower, a little profit taking break to start the day off and the US dollar yen is doing the same um, is there a direct reflection constantly in the market no uh, but there is there is a little bit of that influence ironically uh, we have uh, the dollar is very strong in some of the major currencies and uh, in this market, the dollar is actually kind of weak. It's interesting that you know uh, many people would say, "Why is the U.S. dollar yen of all currencies not riding the trend like the uh, against the dollar like the other currencies?" Especially you know with uh, you know yields only pulling back a little bit and oil pulling back a little bit. Well, that tends to be the case a lot of times where uh, you know uh, even if the the overall trend is uh, dollar strength uh, in the U.S. dollar yen on a daily basis, there's a lot of divergence many times. When uh, you'll have the euro, the pound, and other currencies falling uh, against the dollar, and they are ra <coughs> rallying against the dollar, and the uh, U.S. dollar yen uh, will be uh, uh, actually doing the opposite. Um, and then conversely, right now, where the other currencies are falling to the dollar, and you have the U.S. dollar yen, which is pulling back. So uh, interesting. It's actually fundamentally doing what is very normal today. So a slightly lower trade after a higher move, high breakout yesterday. Uh, interesting enough, uh, we had a head and shoulders kind of forming. Now we can kind of just move this shoulder and head, not like that's something you do all the time. Uh, but in this case, it is getting a little bit toppy. And especially with the potential for yields to have a nice pullback, it wouldn't be out of line to have a correction in the U.S. dollar yen, especially if we do get at least a short term uh, reprieve in the, uh, the strength in oil, which why wouldn't we have that ha uh, happen? Uh, check the messages in the tiger chat. Okay, so I guess I missed there's a um, uh, Okay, let's see we got some messages here. I'm pulling it up right now Sorry guys. I got to get all the way down to the thing. Okay um, PLTR okay, check out this one 
Um, all right, Mara. Okay, so here we have a we have a request. All right, so we're gonna jump away from this and go to PLTR. All right, Palantir Technologies. So obviously you want to know um, what do I think about this one? Uh, well, let's see what we've got going on here. We have a nice little range trade situation, slightly higher, higher move highs here. Um, we'll pull up a little, do a little fib here. Let's see what's going on. All right, well, interestingly enough, you had the 0.32. Uh, we have a tiger, tiger collar out to on the chat okay so let me just finish this one real quick um you had this higher move high that pierced the 0.382 so for you who was wondering about pltr i would key off this high right here and also be mindful of this last low here if you're if you're looking for a trade here if you're gonna have a stop this would be a very key risk area you wouldn't want to be long below here because the overall trend here longer term is bearish short term it is a bull making higher move highs so if we get a breakout especially of the 1636 area i think you would probably get a good chance to get not just the 1691, but probably up towards the 1775 area. This would be an area where I would look to take some profits on that one. Um, okay, so we have a caller, I believe. Um, you guys connect me if, and see if I can get the audio and hear the question. Yeah, hello. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, hi, hi. Um, uh, can you, it's a Forex question. Can you look at the U.S. dollar vis-a-vis -vis the Polish Zwati PLM? Uh, Something's Something has suddenly changed, uh, like in the last hour or so, um, the, the Polish Zwati has just collapsed. Okay, what's the, uh, Simpson, what the USD, curses, what is the other three letters? Possible, um, possible uh, conflict with Belarus, maybe, or Russia or something, because something, the Zwati just tanked. Okay, um, what's, do you know what the other three letters are for this, so I could pull up the chart? So it's US PLN. dollar. I'm yeah, sorry. U.S. dollar slash uh, PLN. PLN. Okay. Okay. So we have U.S. dollar PLN. Yeah, we have a very big bullish breakout here. Let me pull up this. Let's see if we have anything on this. No, there's nothing there. Um, let's see. Nothing there. Okay. So as far as news, I don't know. You definitely have a big breakout here for sure. Mm -hmm. Let me take a look at this on the monthly. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, you okay? So yeah, just in the past few couple of days, you've had almost as much of a range as you had all last month. Now you did have last month. This would ended uh, last week for August. This right here is a bullish engulfing line. So technically, now I don't know what's going on in the news. Um, I would have to look into some uh, outlets to check on that. I haven't looked at Reuters or anything this morning. Yeah. So. If, if there is a news-driven thing, now that is very possible. Uh, with the Ukrainian conflict and everything that's going on, I do know that um, on the, from because of the refugees that they've taken on and a bunch of other things, it's putting a strain on their economy in a big way. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. if they had any economic numbers that came out this morning. I can pull up, uh, let's see, there's, yeah, there's nothing on this here that would indicate that. So, okay, so as far as any anything like that, I don't know. Technically, we ended the month of August. This is a bullish engulfing line. So just on that yeah. basis alone, now it's a big pop in two days, in just five days yeah, of trading. Yeah, very here. big pop. Um, that, that made me want to call you, okay, because you, sure. you're, you're a currency specialist on TFNN. Uh -huh. right, so I'm trying yeah. to figure out, what is this a precursor to war? Well, that is what I was just going to get at is that with the strain on their economy, if it is a precursor to what could happen, meaning that our troops would end up going to Poland, um, that would mean they're that you're probably going to see that you could probably see this all the way back at its highs within the next couple of weeks, literally, if that's the case. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so well, that, that's something I would be very mindful of. It would, it, it, you could, it, this is the kind of situation that would have the currency move that quickly, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the Warsaw Stock Exchange would, would collapse. Huh? Uh, it would it would definitely put them under severe strain because the the yeah. last thing that Poland really needs is to be involved with the war with Russia. Uh, I mean, we're going yeah. back to we're, you're talking about something that would be bringing us back to 30, 40 years ago. You know, um, okay. and uh, this so it's that the, the piece could is important. Could you project on there. the monthly an upside target? 
Uh, yeah, an upside seven. target, absolutely. So short run, I think that easily you could get up to this the 50% mark. There's no reason why on a move like this. You already point passed the 0.236 in just five days. So for okay. a, the market to get up to this 435 area, four dollars and 35 cents, very reasonable. But I think the 449, 50% mark, very, very, mm. very easily could get hit. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. if if it wasn't for news driven, I would say it would take another couple of months, most likely, to get there. Um, but with yeah. a move like this in five days, if it really is something that we're going to head towards, you're probably going to see that in the next like three to four or five weeks. Okay. Okay. And if it takes out that fifty percent, we go back to um, October high. I I think you can come close to it for sure. I'll be watching it. <laughs> The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, everybody. This is Teddy Kexta filling in for Tommy O'Brien. We still have a couple minutes left in the show. It's been a great topics today, and we just had a fantastic question by a caller about the uh, U.S. dollar and versus the Polish, uh, uh, the U.S. dollar Polish PLN uh, trade with what's going on. We love, love hearing, uh, having questions like that, interactions like that as well. So uh, we do have one, uh, someone in the chat who asked about ePoll. I'm going to go cover this real quick. Um, obviously, this market slam new lows. You came off a key high here. Overall, it's a 
bear. I think if you're looking for a, a buying area, it's still going to be probably around the 1714 down to about the uh, $16 area for the iShares here. If you're looking for a buy, if you're bullish and you think that this market, the uh, iShares is going to take a, t a turn. Overall, right now, I'd be very cautious with that because it isn't a bear trend, so you'd be taking a counter trend trade. Um, right now, I would say probably, if anything, you should look, if you're already long, it to take profits and then look to buy back in if that's the kind of thing you're looking at. So um, anyhow, uh, some things we covered today were uh, fantastic topics. Um, uh, in the last example I gave, uh, there was a Japanese candlestick pattern that uh, – gave me a reason for why it should be bullish in the short run. If you're interested in learning how you can use uh, Japanese candlestick patterns uh, in stock and option trades, we did a webinar recently. You can find that on the TFNN website. And we have another we uh, webinar coming out as well. Check out TFNN.com if you like the things that I covered today and want to learn more about uh, these things that I use in my trading as when how to apply them for equities and options. Check it out. Um, and uh, definitely uh, I uh, want to thank uh, TFNN for having me on, for helping Tommy out today. I'll be on next Monday, uh, September 11th. Irony, um, that's a day in the stock and equity markets, let alone American history, that none of us can forget. I was on the trading floor at the uh, CME when that when the when the planes hit, I'll be bringing up some stories about, um, you know, that event besides covering the markets on that day. So uh, definitely, hopefully uh, you'll have some interesting questions, too, from uh, callers uh, out in there from your tigers and tigresses. So I um, want to thank you once again. You guys have a wonderful trading day. All right. Take care.